was a racing car driver, but was so much more. Mm. Peter Brock was a V8 supercar legend, the king of the mountain, but transcended his sport. Sure did. He was so loved, wasn't he? Now, 12 years after his tragic death in Perth, the great man's memory lives on. Paul Marshall goes behind the scenes of an auction of 30 of Brock's most famous cars. Loose as Peter Brock comes around Murray's corner to take the chequered flag at the end of the great race. He's done it. He's won it. There's something from every year and every uh, part of his, his career here. There's a little bit of Brock in every corner of this place. In what used to be an old shopping centre on the Gold Coast is Lloyd's Auctions. And among the microwaves, washing machines and beds is a collection of Australian motor racing history. Peter Brock history. 30 of his race cars. What's this one? This car is the 82-83 uh, uh, Marlborough Holden dealer team car. Uh, it won Bathurst in both, both years. Ryan Gaffey is Lloyd's classic car curator. You do get a sense of the history, don't you? Mm, mm. Peter Brock sat behind the wheel. Exactly. He's probably still a bit of his DNA in there. Like so many young boys back then, he remembers watching TV as Brock won his first Bathurst in 1972. Ryan was a Ford man until he was 14 and met Brock at a race. I had a bag with all my lunch and everything and uh, I was trying to stick it under a car and it was raining. And then Peter Brock was sitting in a, in a rent a car there having a bite to eat or whatever he's doing. And he said, oh, don't put your bag under there, mate. If they move, it'll get run over, stick in the back of my car. And that's sort of how I met him. And uh, then I tried to go up and get an autograph off Moffat and he was too busy. So I thought, well, out with, Hol out with Ford and in with Holden and that's sort of how, how it started. The cars will all be auctioned in September. As a collection, it could be worth $10 million. Lee, is there one car I can afford here? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, all cars will start at a dollar. Lee Hames is Lloyd's chief operations officer. He says they've already had thousands of calls. The phones have been running hot. We've got a call centre dedicated to this collection. We've got one particular call that came through last night. He's got 31 people together. Uh, so far, they've raised 1.3 million. They're not sure how much they need. He was gifted, he really was. I used to say to people he could have been the Prime Minister of our country, or he could have been a movie star. Peter Champion was in the mining business. He collected all these cars and had them in a museum in Yapoon. He sold the collection recently and the new owner, Lloyds won't say who that is, is turning them around. Peter, he was a mate? Yeah, look, um, ended up um, a really good mate and a good friend. Some of these cars have had laps around the mountain with him. Was that scary, going around the mountain with Peter Brock? Uh, the first lap I ever got with him, uh, I, I said to him, I said, oh, I thought it would have been a bit faster than that. Well, that was a dumb thing to say to PB. Absolutely dumb because uh, he pulled the choke out and got right into it next lap, so that gave me a bit of a fright. As a boy, Brock raised an old paddock bomb around the farm. This isn't it, but Peter Champion says it's bits of it. That seat and the wheels were off the original, so. Seat and the wheels? Yeah. Oh, that's good enough. That's, that's a big part. You can't do nothing with it without that. His first race car was a hotted up Austin A30. This is a replica built by his son, but even as what's called a tribute car, it could be quarter of a million. Whoever gets this little car, will, it'll be, it's got a lot of history with Brocky in it. And it was also used to, um, at Sandown, to cart his ashes at the memorial. So it's a very special little Austin A30. But it's this car that's expected to bring the most. The most common sight in Australian motor racing, Peter Brock and the winner's trophy. Brock and Larry Perkins won the 1984 Bathurst in a big banger. Its sister car was second. Race cars get crashed, rebuilt and sold. And there's always been an argument over which was the winning 05 car. There's one in the National Motor Racing Museum in Bathurst. But Peter Champion says Brock told him this was his car. It only raced three times in our country, like uh, it did Sandown, Bathurst, and the race just down the road from where we stand today. So, um, and he won all three of those races with this car. Brock raced it in England too. Look at this, can you, 
You see the signatures on the wheel. Larry Perkins, Peter Brock. The steering wheel alone would be worth a fortune. For us, it's not really about the money. It's about honouring Peter Brock and honouring the car and the collection. It's a little bit about the money. <laughs> yeah. There's a story with every one of these cars, an absolute story. Are you keeping one? I am, actually. Yeah. Which one? Look, um, I've, I've kept the Daytona because um, when... Um, it's the one Peter died in. The one he passed away in, yes. I didn't want somebody turning up out in the car park saying, I've got Brocky's last engine. I've got his last gearbox or his wheels or anything like that. Lloyd says it will be a rock star auction in September, where it should be in Bathurst. I know PB would, would be just happy that, that the cars are, are still here, we're still talking about them, and, and look, look at the attention they're drawing. Oh, wow. Talk about a huge part of Australian motor racing folklore, which really is part of Australian folklore, isn't it? What Peter a lovely Brock. thing to do yeah. and mm. to honour his memory. Definitely. Sad that he's no longer with us.